Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, characters of all shapes, sizes, denominations, and genders, welcome to Requested Monday, the show where you decide what I play. And this month, surprisingly, it came down to Metro 2033 Redux and Outer Wilds. And while Metro 2033 Redux had the lead in the public voting, there were literally no votes for it in the Patreon vote. Everything went to the Outer Wilds. So that's what we're playing today. Before we go on, I do have to say, Wednesday I will be streaming at whatever time I decide to start streaming, sometime in the morning, and then going until about 6 o'clock at night, because I'll be recording that night as well. So I'm going to have to end a little bit earlier than I normally would. But I'm just going to be hanging out, chilling, playing games, streaming it for you. So you can definitely hang out then. And then Friday, XCOM Files. It's going to be a stream full week. Hope you enjoy. Now, let's talk about this game. The Outer Wilds, or just Outer Wilds, I guess is technically the name, um, is a game by Annapurna Interactive. Let me just swap this over here. Whoop. Unmute that. Okay. I do have a controller. So we're good. Go over here and do this. Okay. So this is a game that I have not played. I have no idea what this game is about at all. Well, I know a couple of things about what this game might be about. But I don't know anything about it. So let's find out together. Oh, got to enter profile name. Old standby. Uh, on the left is barely visible. All right. Graphics, does everything look good? Sure does. Okay. It does look really good. So, the thing about Annapurna Interactive is they make fantastically involving walking simulators usually not always the first game that i played that was put out by annapurna interactive was gone home which i really enjoyed um they've done things like journey um i just look up this list you'd think i'd know they did stray uh you know just good games that are there's a little bit of puzzling but there's not usually uh um like an overarching puzzle theme but i don't know what this game is I really don't. From what I understand, the universe is ending, and you have to occasionally jump into a black hole, and that's all I got. And I'm like, I'm making a campfire on a planet that's got trees. How am I jumping into a black hole? So I guess we'll see. Also, hi, Tyler. Hi, third. Oh, okay. Hmm. All right. How it is. There's our pilot back from your pre-launch camp out under the stars, I see. So it's launch day, eh? Seems the only, like only yesterday you joined the space program and suddenly here you are, leaving in your first solo voyage. What do you say? Ready to get this beauty off the ground? It's all fueled and ready to go. You're sure you fixed the retro rockets? I was only a problem one time, and then maybe a few times after that. But hey, no reason to dwell in the past, right? Anyway, you'll need to get the launch codes from Hornfells at the observatory before you can lift off. Just bring those here once you said your goodbyes or whatever. Okay. That's not a thing. Alright, I gotta jump. 
Requires launch codes. How to, what? What am I launching from a wooden scaffolding that looks like it's held together with nails and dreams? Also, hi, Fen. Hi, Micah. Hey, it's you. Slate said you're blasting off in your ship today. I'm really excited to see the launch. Aren't you going into space? Aren't you? You better not change your mind. Oh, you're just saying that. But if you really want to practice with me, I guess I could help you out a little. Try to land on one of the geyser pools. Show me what you got. Okay. Oh! Well, I did an alien on roll. Nailed it. What if I land on the geyser? Yes. Perfect. <laughs> Woo! Look at this baby fly! <laughs> Alright, like, am I just supposed to land it? I did it. Now what? How do I get out of here? Oh, leave. Circle. Okay. How was that? So I slate lets you find the real thing, huh? Yeah, absolutely. I am the best at landing. It only took four attempts. Uh, whoop. No. Do you want me to jump down from the ledge up there? Seems dangerous. Oh, wait, no, there's a path over here. Never mind. <laughs> hey, Porphy. Hey, oh, hatchling. How are you leaving us to seek adventure amongst the stars? You turn, let's a you, me, and ghost and open up a bottle of the good stuff. Mostly seeking adventure amongst one star, actually. Other stars are too far away. The good stuff is less delicious sap wine and more daunting digestive challenge. Oh, another metaphor ruined in the name of scientific accuracy. Nevertheless, I do hope you enjoy your travels. Good luck! Actually blasting off in these things, huh? They really don't explode as often anymore. All I know is between the space program and Micah's model rockets, things seem to burn to the ground around here more than they used to. Yeah, cool. This projector is linked to our Sky Shutter satellite, which is currently orbiting Timberhard. Satellite is equipped with two onboard cameras. See if you can take a snapshot of our picture of our village. Oh, I'm actually taking... I thought I was going through something. Jeez. This pilot seat used by pioneering engine on Feldspa is all that remains of our inaugural flight into space. Though it's been argued such a distinction requires a breathtakingly liberal definition of flight, that day will nevertheless be remembered as a landmark achievement in Harthian history. Is all of our technology made of wood? How do we get into space? I'm I'm not even mad, I'm just impressed. Oh, it's launch day, huh? How's gonna miss you? Speaking of launch day, I was thinking about it, and the platform those ships would launch from is getting old. Isn't it about time you built a new, less flammable one? 
That big tree in the village would be the perfect choice. I don't mind helping out the space program. Just say the word. The launch pad is flammable? <laughs> you didn't realize that? Don't worry, it's held up for all the launches so far. It'll definitely be fine for yours, probably. So, NASA won't launch anything if the percentage chance for failure is more than half a percent. I'm pretty sure I have a half a percent chance of successfully going up. Hey there, Space Cadet. Here you're leaving the crater today. If you meet any of the other travelers up there, remind them to take proper care of their instruments, won't you? Tell me about the travelers' instruments. Oh, sure. I made all their instruments. You know. Let's see. There's Church Drums, Rebex Banjo, and Gabbro's Flute. Falspire's harmonica, of course, though Falspire's been missing for a long time. It feels like just yesterday we were playing the harmonica around the campfire. Anyway, you hear music in space. That'll be one of the space programs of the travelers. If you feel like company, you can always pull out your signal scope and track them down. Alright. Hello, astronaut. What's on the radio? We wanted to play hide and seek, but Marine won't let us borrow their signal scope because it's really delicate and not supposed to be thrown around like that. Hey, can we use your signal scope? Can we, can we please? We'll even let you be it. Sure, let's play. <sighs> oh, excuse me. Galena and I will hide these will will hide these radios and you'll use your signal scope to find us. Last one to be found wins. Alright, looks like we got behind the waterfall and whatever's over here. Yeah. Hello, shit. How am I supposed to get up there? Oh, I see. Okay. Hup. Hup. Found ya. <laughs> Hup. Oh god. I am the greatest astronaut, don't even fucking doubt it. Fish and ram, fish and ram, singing helps you pass the time. In the crater, I'll be a little, a little busier that you're on lend a hand. That big water plant, giant deceit, that's where I'd go. One time after the rest of the village had left to sleep and it was just the two of us sitting around the campfire, Gabra told me about the first trip to Giant Speed. And the ship easily enough in the waves, but couldn't see too far down on account of how murky the water was, I guess. Too dark. Gabra wants to see what lie beneath the surface. Hey, hey, you can't have a deep I'm sorry, I'm not tired, just yawning. They traveled down and down, but suddenly you couldn't go any further. Tell me more. I will. I was just pausing dramatically. As though exercising a will of its own, the water was refusing to let Gabbro go any deeper. It held Gabbro back. Almost as if we were trying to protect him from something. And in that terrible darkness, Gabbro saw it. Tentacle of some hideous beast! Yeah! I mean, that's what Gabbro said, anyway. Whatever it was, it freaked Gabbro up pretty good. Who wants to hear new stories of the village campfire, you know? Make sure you bring something back with you. Alright. 
Turbo jumping. Inside this fence is a pocket of ghost matter, a strange and dangerous substance that's invisible to the naked eye. You can detect ghost matter with a camera. It's uniquely painful and will probably kill you. Don't complain to me if you hurt yourself fooling around. Okay. Good to know. Hey, astronaut. You know the patch of ghost matter inside this fence? Ghost says it used to be bigger when they were a hatchling, because ghost matter evaporates. It just takes a super long time to go away. I hope there's still ghost matter in the village when I'm growing up. Ghost matter is awesome. Ghost matter is super cool. It'll burn the heck out of you. Yeah, I heard touching it hurts so bad it feels like your whole hand's on fire. Try not to walk in any in space, okay? That sounds bad and painful. Zero G cave? Hi, right, come say hi to your old flight coach before launch. I got zero tree tra G training set up if you want a refresher. Hey, thought I might see you before the big launch. Nerves getting the better of you? Right, like, are you kidding? I'm a natural with this. I seem to recall the first time you strapped on a jetpack, we had to come fish you out of the crater near the South Pole. So listen, there's a satellite, which is definitely not just a piece of broken mining equipment, set up in the Zero-G cave and need of repairs. Look at a little last-minute Zero-G practice, head down the lift and into the cave. Or don't, as long as you're... Okay. One repaired satellite coming up. I cannot stop yawning. It's actually getting a little infuriating. Maybe I just need to breathe better. Oh, I definitely can't drink coffee. Zero G cave. Zero G cave. Okay, got a fuel meter, got an O2 meter. Good to know. Hey, hey nice of you to drop down. I'm getting some zero G time in. So you're going in there, in the cave? <clears throat> but no, I'm fine. Great, great and fine. You don't look fine. Well, you know, I ate that cave, so I don't know why you're making me talk about it. <clears throat> now I got hand sweats. Hand sweats are no joke, my good man. Okay, match velocity, got it. Ducted tape. Something over there. L. And then go down a bit, down a bit, down a bit more. Match velocity. That's cool. It tells you your relative velocity. I like that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, how do I hold position? I can't hold position. Go down, go down, go down, go down, go down. There we go. There we go. Okay. This is going to be a little tricky to get used to. And there we go. Remember, everybody, zero G is bad for you. Oh, God, okay, whoa, and we're, okay, 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 okay. Causes bones to deteriorate. All kinds of bad stuff happens. Uh, 
Ow. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Nicely done. Of course, it'd be a little more stressful when you're hurtling through space. Just remember your training and try not to hit anything big. See you're itching to get off this rock, so go get the launch codes from the observatory and get out of here already. Best luck out there, and hey, try to avoid getting yourself killed now that I put so much time into training. You got it? I saw smoke coming from Young Bark Crater up north and figured I should go check it out. You can use the scout launcher, just please don't break it while I'm gone. Ha oh. East Nomai Ruins. Quantum Grove Crater. Geyser Mountains. Young Bark Crater. Okay. Use scout launcher. We want to go this way. Huh, that's kind of cool. What just happened? The hell was that? Why did it get dark? All right, that's creepy. Don't like it. Is there falling damage? Yes. Ow. All right, but health regenerates, so it's fine. My clankles. All right, observatory this way. It could be space whales. There's something... It looks like there's, like, satellites up there. Outer Wild Ventures founding members. Clockwise from top left. Hornsfels, Gosen, Slate, and Feldspar. Timber Earth's first and only space program... Timber Hearth space... First and only space program was founded to explore the farthest reaches of our solar system. Feldspar was the first Hearthian... To be intentionally launched into space. <laughs> intentionally launched into space. Completed the first orbit around Timber Hearth and came back. And later made the first of what would be many landings on our moon, the Adel Rock. Hmm. This remarkably intact statue was carved by Nomai, an ancient species who dwelled in our solar system thousands of years ago. Provides us with our most detailed look yet at the Nomai, who appear to have been covered with a layer of fur. and the decorative jewelry that has been carved as part of the antlers. The artifacts and structures... <sighs> Jesus. I've been found on most, almost every plant in the solar system. We still have no idea where the species came from or what happened to them. Well, I say it last, huh, buddy? It's translator tools, inaugural flight too. I'm so excited it's making me nauseous. Any, tra any know my text you want, you can translate anywhere you are. Two of us put a lot of hours into inventing that tool, so don't go breaking it. So don't break it, okay? <laughs> oh, jeez, do not break it. <laughs> Fur is weird. Alright, so... God, there's so much. No, my writing was essential to deciphering their unique language. Though this text is linear, no, my text often branches off from a central point. Interestingly, each branch tends to be written by a different author. Ooh. Felix and I have finished construction, and she says calibrating the device won't take long. Oh! Neat. 
Fortunately, the Adelrock's lack of atmosphere will make calibration simple. After all this time, I'm thrilled to finally be able to we'll finally resume our search. Huh. That's cool. I like that. Aside from buildings and structures, they also made art. Decorated pottery was discovered on pottery was discovered on Brittle Hollow. Good old Xeno archaeology. Parts of a Nomai skeleton. We can tell from their skulls that they possessed antlers and quite unusually only three eyes. Most likely adapted for living exclusively on land, differences in the Nomai's anatomy, such as their shockingly fragile bone structure, shows us that Hearthians couldn't have descended from Nomayan ancestors. Not more clear where they originated from or why they disappeared. Nomai technology brought back from space by our astronauts has been a great boon to outer wild ventures, allowing us to modify expedition gear in exciting and useful ways. Little Scout now boasts a warp retrieval capability that allows astronauts. Oh my god, I can't stop yawning. Fuck! I'm sorry. It seems to create a local gravity distortion, most likely used to traverse steep surfaces. Try it out. Oh god! <laughs> sorry! I always throw up when my center of gravity suddenly changes. Okay. Star is massive enough it will continue to fuse carbon into even heavier, heavier elements like iron. Star will collapse under its own gravity and then explode in a violent event called the supernova. Based on Chert's observation, this may one day this will one day be the fate of our own sun. So supernovas are when suns go catastrophically bad. Or stars go catastrophically bad. Novas are what normally happen. But I could be wrong on that. My stellar cartography and astrophysics are not up to date. Okay, so this is a whole thing. Stars like our sun generate light and heat by fusing hydrogen into helium. As it grows older, the star runs out of hydrogen and starts to contract. <sighs> As the star's core contracts, it gets hotter, causing the outer layers to expand. The stars become a red giant. When the core is hot enough, it will start to fuse helium into carbon. And then carbon into iron. Yeah. Future side of our next exhibit. These balls move on their own. The answer is the moon. As it orbits our planet, the Adelrock's gravity, Adelrock's gravity pulls on objects from different directions. Are they moving? They are very slowly moving. Oh, oh, oh! Okay, now they're moving. I think they're moving now. Strange rock moving around in this grotto appears to react to conscious observation. It exists in all possible states until it's observed. Both sides of this debate agree the effect is extremely creepy. Don't like it. <laughs> Don't like that. Oh, Jesus. Dark Bramble, Giant's Deep, Brittle Hollow, Timber Hearth, The Hourglass Twins, and then something there, maybe? I can't. There's something up here. 
but I can't see what it is. So far out of the galactic, or the, the galactic, the uh, system plane that I probably won't be able to get there anyway. Hornfeld's observation. This is incredible. At first I thought the points would lighten this image of stars, but they're not. They're galaxies. This image covers just a tiny patch of the whole sky, which means the universe contains at least a thousand times more galaxies than we had previously imagined. I, I think I need to sit down. The cool... Okay. Time out. There's a really cool scientific observation that was published last week or the week before that I was like, what the hell? So, the, the universe is expanding, right? Ever since the Big Bang, the universe is constantly expanding. What they found out recently is that the rate of expansion is not uniform. And they don't understand why. The, the, the galaxy is expanding at, I don't know, let's, let's just throw out a number, it's not actually correct, but it's, it, everybody was like, oh, the galaxy is expanding at 15 parsecs a minute. Cool. And then they found out, but over here, it's like 14 parsecs a minute. And that's weird, right? And everybody was like, yeah, that's pretty fucking weird. And they're like, well, how does that work? And they're like, we don't fucking know. Maybe our physics is completely wrong. And I read that and I was like, what the fuck do you mean? <laughs> it was very weird. There you are. I just finished pre-flight observations and local conditions are good. Time to get our newest astronaut off the ground. You'll be the first astronaut ever equipped with a Nomai translator tool. I confess I've been giddy all day just thinking about it. We're better equipped than ever to unravel the mysteries of the Nomai. You and Hal should be very proud of your work. What's your plan once you're in space? I'm going to wing it. Planning to follow in the footsteps of Feldspar and the, and the Great Outer Wilds Ventures tradition, are you? I might have guessed. Well, see if you can't put that translator tool of yours to good use while you're out there. Well, then it looks like all that's left to do is send you off. All in all, it's a fine day for a launch. I'm ready to get iron. I'm ready to die in space. I'm not one for superstition. But isn't that kind of unlucky to say before a launch? Now you're right here, the launch codes. Try not to worry too much. Our ships are every bit as safe as they could be persuaded to make them. Best of luck out there. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Remember, everybody, ASA is a government organization. So everything that is sent into space is built by the lowest bidder. Can I help you? The fuck was that? Well, I guess, uh, hey, did you get a good look at that Nomai statue? The statue was glowing. All right. The statue looked at me and opened its eyes. Whoa, whoa, the statue was doing what? So its eyes open, and then you saw images from your own memories and glowing lights flying around? You mean like a hallucination? Listen, no offense, but are you sure you're okay to launch? Like, medically speaking? No, that statue's definitely weird. I mean, if you're saying it happened, then I guess maybe it did, but why? Hornfell's tried everything to get the statue's eyes to open, and nothing like this ever happened to them. I don't think you're gonna get any, any answers from the museum statue, but Gabbara said they were going back to Giant's Deep. Don't know which island they're on, though. Maybe they'll be able to tell you more. On the other hand, Gabbro's, you know, Gabbro, so maybe you're better off searching for more info on your own. I'm really jealous you're going into space. Hey, see if you can use our translator tool to find out more about the statue, okay? Good luck and safe flying. Alright, so there is no sprint option.
Nope, that's the lander testing. Hell yeah. Cook, bitch! Cook, yes! Alright, so, honest question, marshmallows, burnt, crispy, or just soft? What do you prefer? Goldine Brown, okay. Buckle up. Oh boy, let's go. Where are we going? I mean, I kind of expected there to be more fanfare, but you know, whatever. Whatever. What else? Oh god, where am I going? Uh, let's go to... Brittle Hollow. It's right there. Oh god, that's the sun. Oh Jesus. Is there just, like, space to breathe? The interloper. Sure, it's only five kilometers off. At least they're not making you Kerbal this thing. Oh, the interloper is a comet. I'm trying to match velocity. This thing's... We had a lot of velocity to match, Jesus. Okay. Now we need to get closer. Ooh! Autopilot! But can I land on it? Uh, I landed. Oh, it's fine. Oh, she's a beast. How is landing mode helpful? I was kind of hoping for like a third person camera or something. Whoa, 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 okay, we're good. Dark Bramble, that doesn't sound fun. Timber Hearth, Brittle Hollow, Dark Bramble. All right, let's go to Giant's Deep since Gabbro is there, I guess. Landing mode helps you see what you're landing on. I mean, I guess. Are those explosions or lightning storms? All right, we're approaching it at half a kilometer a second. something there. Oh 
Oh God. Oh Jesus. Woo, right into the put drink. Up. Holy shit. Oh, back underwater. Okay, it's fine. This place has gravity, forgot. Let's try to avoid the tornadoes. The horrible, horrifying tornadoes. Oh, we got something. We got something. Nailed it. <laughs> Ow. The fuck? All right, cool. Okay, that's got ghost rock all over it. Hey, Gabriel. Nice, it's you. Glad you made it here in one piece. First solo launch is a doozy, isn't it? So, hey, don't laugh, but I think I might have some kind might have had some kind of spiritual experience with the rock shaped little bit of face. Me too. You're saying the statue I brought to the museum started glowing at you? Yeah, that sounds about right. One minute I'm standing on an island looking at a Nomai sculpture on the beach. The next thing I know, it's looking back at me, glowing. Replays everything I've just done like it's been watching me through my own eyes, you know? And then it suddenly stops and everything's normal again. It didn't seem bad, just weird. Were we the only ones who saw that happen? I tried radioing Hornfells and asking them about it, but they told me I must have just nodded off out here and gotten confused. We talked about dreams until Hornfels told me to go refill my oxygen tank before I talked myself to death. So that's what's new with me. But hey, this is your first solo voyage. Let's talk about you, you know? What are any of us doing here, really? Nah, I'm just gonna go. Oh god, I'm not wearing a suit. Uh. Gabro? <laughs> Help? Oh god! Oh. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> Thanks, Gabro! Did I just die? That's a negative on being deceased. Alright, I'm just gonna fucking go. Alright, so noted. Put suit on before getting off ship. Especially on Giant's Deep. We didn't finish this conversation, but you know what? Let's go to Brito Hollow. Maybe it's a little less hazardous to my goddamn health. Hollow's Lantern, okay. Wasn't there a satellite around here too? That one doesn't have a name.
Is that a black hole? You know what? I don't want to go that. Let's go to the Adel Rock. Uh, yeah, oh, hello, I, okay. Nope, don't like that. You know what? I'm okay with walking. Okay with walking just a bit. Suit up. Unidentified signal nearby. Oh, hey, it's you. Ground Control didn't tell me you were launching. Long time no see. Actually, I guess it's been a long time since I've seen anyone. Don't the other travelers come by? Lunar Outpost saw more traffic back when our ships were less sophisticated and needed more frequent repairs. Nowadays, it's mostly used to keep a set of eyes on things. Sometimes Chert comes by to say hi, but Gabbro's Gabbro, and you know how Ryback feels again about unnecessary space flight. Don't go. Uh, I mean, is there anything else you want to talk about? It seems lonely up here. A little. I'm in touch with ground control, hornfells, and ghosts, and mostly. They chat up, they radio up the chat now and then. And when ground control forgets I'm up here, then they usually do. I have to my little scout of the village. They forget about you? I don't blame them. For one, I don't check in as often as the other travelers since I'm always in one place. And it's not so bad up here, really. At least it's peaceful and quiet. You don't always get that in our solar system, let alone in our village. Was that you whistling? Probably. Or actually, definitely. The other travelers carry instruments, so they don't bother whistling. You can pick up their music with the signal scope, you know. Best spot for that is the North Pole. Great reception. North Pole is marked in, me in red on your mini-map, but the Adel Rock is a pretty small moon, really. Just go north, can't miss it. Very funny. Oh, stars above, you're serious, aren't you? That's just depressing. Welcome to the Lunar Outpost, which apparently the space program doesn't bother to teach anyone anymore. When we first started Outer Wilds, travelers used to bring their ships here all the time for repairs. Uh, our spacefaring technology has improved loads since then, but the older ships tend to uh, fall apart, like, more than they do now. Using the outpost cut down the number of launches and landings taking place in the village, and also the number of fires. Nowadays, there's mostly just me up here raising saplings from Timber Hearth and keeping an eye on things. I thought he had a fishing rod, and I'm like, dude. Alright, so... He said to go north? It's not that far? Ooh. Ow. Ask your signal scope log. Still not picking up Ryback's banjo from Brittle Hollow. I'm sure they're fine, but I'll feel better once I can hear their music. This is a chart play for a while today. Unrelated, someone should tell Porphy and Gosen their flirting is not subtle from an aerial perspective. Banjo music coming in loud and clear today. Sounds like Ryback's doing okay. That oaf, I was worried. Today I thought I heard something strange. I don't know, it was probably nothing. No, it's back again today too. Something strange is coming from Timberhearth. Okay, I know this is crazy, but the sound from Timberhearth sounds exactly like Feldspar's harmonica. But Feldspar disappeared in space ages ago. It can't be them. It's still here. This is creepy. Maybe my signal scope is broken? I better talk to Nice. Okay. So, this is the North Pole. Alright, so we got Gabra there. Feldspar's harmonica? Okay. 
Apparently somebody's in the sun. Oh no, there's another planet there. Okay. Okay, that's the twins. Oh, he got confused because there's like a little planetoid. All right, let's go see what we can do about that. Ow. Problem is, it's not on my ship. Oh, there it is. That's Dark Bramble. Okay, let's go check out Dark Bramble. This is a weird game where it doesn't even tell you anything. It's just like, yeah, uh, figure shit out. Go. Do what you want. Go. Nope, that missed. Okay. This thing's got a weird trajectory. Wait, is this the thing that was outside the galactic plane? Going north-south instead of east-west, basically? Whoops. Man, how am I gonna land on this thing? Yes, if I go up here. You know what? This looks a bit safer. There, landed. All right. Why is my fuel still low? Oh, there we go. Some sort of device on the Adel Rock. We should probably have looked for that. Oh well. All right. Did I seriously pick, like, the longest possible? I did. Oh my god. F fucking what? It's 800 meters straight down. I'm terrified. You know what? I'm good. Actually, you know what I can do?
Oop. Oop. So, third. It's not cowardice. Oh, this is camera two. Okay. It's not necessarily cowardice. It's that I don't think I would have enough oxygen to get back up there. So. I'm going to get back in my ship and land deeper. I don't even know if I can land down here. Whoa, 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 Headlights damage, landing gear damaged. Great. Good to know that that can get broken. Wait, what? The fuck? But it was just a hundred meters away. Whoa, what the? No! Jesus! All right. So let's not go to Dark Bramble. Uh, let's actually go back to the Adult Rock. Oh. See, we can't find that device. Why do I keep pushing the wrong button? Okay. Oh, God. Fuck it. Land. Jesus. So I've only got the one frequency, which isn't really helpful. I 
did see a couple of craters, though. Whoa, that is a big crater. What is that? Property of Chert. This is an old crater. The neat thing here is the composition of the samples I took from the impact site matches the composition of the ice on the outskirts of Dark Bramble. I'd posit the Addle Rock was hit with a piece of the planet that used to be where Dark Bramble now lies. To follow up on, maybe there are more fragments of the old planet Dark Bramble destroyed on other astral bodies in the solar system? Okay. Okay. I don't like the breathing. Like, it's not necessarily, you know, bad. It's just uncomfortable. Oh, hey, the sun's coming up. Cool. Look at me, I'm a froggy. Okay, I somehow turned in a complete circle. Fairly minor craters. There's something here. What is this? I feel like I'm not really told how or even if I should interact with things. It's a little confusing. Assuming this is, yep, this is the outpost. Sweet O2. Well, it could still drive me nuts. Don't uh, don't worry about that. I'm already kind of confused. And that doesn't take much, admittedly, but also. All right, and this goes back to the ship. All right. Skip the ship. Let's go to the South Pole and see if there's anything there. What do you know? A thing. Oh, God, I have no gravity. Ah! Okay. Excuse me? Hey, that's the symbol that we saw in that tablet. In the museum. Maybe that means there's something down here. Oh, okay. It was upstairs testing the eye signal locator and can hear it can hear and follow the signals from the sun, giant's deep, and brittle hollow. However, something strange is happening when I ask this eye signal locator to follow the eye signal. The device's indicator rotates wildly and never points in just one direction. I see. I most likely calibrated the locator incorrectly. Privet, my apprentice, and I will make adjustments to try again. An update. Disappointingly, everything is calibrated correctly after all. It saddens me to posit this, my friends, but I believe this locator cannot detect the eye signal. We need to build a more sensitive device if we want to locate the eye of the universe. Then we will build it. Don't lose hope, Kassava. Our search for the eye is what brought, us, brought our clan to this place. We won't give up this so easily. This is a curious result. It's possible that the eye has stopped calling out its signal. Okay.
All right, I have this there. Oh. That's cool. I like that. So the scrolls are what have things on them. These are just like projector screens. That's cool. Where should this new, more sophisticated locator be built? It may need to be larger than this eye signal locator is. The Southern Glacier in Brittle Hollow has ample available space. I can construct a new building to house this proposed locator. Yes, let's build there. I imagine our young friend Con Kanoi would enjoy that immensely. He's always held a great interest in the eye, especially for a child born so long after the crash. I will begin construction on Brittle Hollow South Pole immediately then. Anona and those of us originally stranded on Ember Twin built a quantum moon located there, but the heat of the sun made its construction challenging. I wouldn't recommend building on that planet. Okay, wow. Wow. I've seen this ruin in other travelers' pictures, but seeing it for myself, it's really old, isn't it? But wow, this is the coolest day of my life. Okay, um... Time for some official notes. So, this is some kind of Nomai locator. It can point out the different planets, which is incredibly cool, by the way. But from what little I can understand of the writing here, I think it was built to try and find something specific. I'm not sure. I was also able to translate something about the South Pole of Brittle Hollow. So I'll fly there to see if I can learn more. Yep. It's gonna get back in the old ship and take off. Totally safe. Mostly safe. All the stars above. Okay. Okay, it's sealed off. Oh! This is this, the eye of the universe that they're trying to find, and it can't point to it, because it doesn't know where it is. This is pointing to the sun. I'd imagine this is going to point to Tim, uh, Timber Hearth. No? Oh god. I fell. Okay, so that's pointing to Giant's Deep. Right, because that's the water planet. The horrible, horrible water planet. Brittle Hollow, maybe? Yeah, Brittle Hollow. Okay. But this, it, it literally cannot find the thing. It doesn't know where it is. That's cool. Oh. Oh, I thought it was stopping. I was like, wait, did it find it? But no, that'd be too easy. Okay. Ow. Alright. So the Nomai... We're looking for... The Eye of the Universe, whatever that might be. And it's something that can transmit. And that's all we know so far. Alright. Alright, where to next? They said the southern pole of Brittle Hollow. That might be helpful. Isn't there also a person on there? What's this? That's Hollow's Lantern. What's this? I don't know what that is. Alright, let's go to Brittle Hollow. Autopilot! Nope, don't fly me through the sun, please. I blame the autopilot for that one. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the autopilot blew me into the sun.
<laughs> and I'm cool. What keeps exploding up there? What is that? Where did it go? All right, I'm assuming ship's log is still updated. Okay, Statue Island, Zero GK Village, yep, yep, yep. Eye signal locator, harmonica signal, Lunar Lookout. Okay. Yeah. There's more to explore here. Yeah, okay. We gotta go talk to Gabbro. Alright. I gotta go see what the hell is the deal with this thing anyway. What are you? It's not just like a Kessler syndrome thing, right? Yeah, okay, it's big enough that it's pulling me in. What the hell? What the hell was that? No, 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 come back here. What is this? It's like a structure? Is there anywhere to land on it? It's debris, yes, obviously. Thank you. I mean, I could maybe land on this thing. Whoops. Come back. Thank you. Keep overcorrecting. Thank you. Somebody appreciates my daring landing on absolutely nothing. Let's see what's down here. Jesus. Okay. Yeah, I'll say ship log updated. What is this place? Nope, that goes outside. Oh, don't want to do that. Ow. Oh, cool. 
Something smashed into it. Okay. So what I saw on waking up was somebody smashing into the side of this damn thing. Which is kind of impressive because it seems like it's a little hard to miss. Ow. So that goes back where I came from? No, that goes back where I came from. I've been this way. Really? Okay. Oh, don't like that. Okay. Uh, throw up. And we're good. Pick up launch module projection stone. Mallow, my better 50%. Cassava is sending the last of the cannon components. Soon, relatively speaking, we'll know the eye's precise location. The thought of concluding our Elder's curious and challenging search increases my heart's temperature, my love. Cassava tells me and the key in the construction yard crew have determined a power setting we are not, under any circumstances, to go above. I see. Am I right to think that consequently we'll be ignoring that setting? I can pause it with nearly 100% certainty. Our future friends have accounted for our nature, so I suggest we do. Giving the orbital probe cannon all the power it can structurally withstand creates the greatest chance of finding the eye of the universe. Yes, the probe must travel as fast as it can, as far as it can. I'll make some adjustments. Okay. Eh, doesn't like that. Alright. I'll put you in here. Sorry, what? What am I looking at? Okay, I don't know what that did, but all right. I have bad news, Avens. Yarrow says there was a problem with the proposed power source, so the orbital probe cannon won't be asked to fire. Hope you're pulling my locomotive limb here, Cassava. I wish I were my friend, but no, they can't, aren't certain they can fix the problem, so the orbital probe cannon is on indefinite hiatus. Tell Privet Mallow they should return from the cannon. My spouse and I will remain at the construction yard for now. An update, Mallow and I will join you in Daz. Privet left to visit her brother. She feels Idea may feel responsible. Wait a damn minute. Come here for a second. What is this? Intended, but all right. I can't pick that up. 
It's like it's not there. It's like a lot of things that weren't there are suddenly not are suddenly there. That's weird. Nine minutes, 18 seconds ago. Request to launch pro probe received from Ash Twin Project. Cannon aligned with randomly selected probe trajectory. Gravity field activated. I think I know what happened here. Then it fires the probe and explodes. Begin launch log. Orbital probe cannon launch request successful. Were received. Probe launch successful. Probe tracking module is receiving data from probe. Orbital probe cannon structure compromised during launch. Damage to multiple modules detected. But it just happened. So one of the explorers must have done it. Must have launched it somehow. Orbital probe cannon damage report. Severe structural stress detected. Assessing damage to modules. Control module intact. No structural damage. Launch module. Viewport window fractured. Module exposed to vacuum of space. Probe tracking module missing. Okay. everything get distorted I don't understand what this is doing Is this what it looked like when it was intact? That can't be right. I don't get what that's showing me, but okay. Well, I wanted to know what the hell that thing was that I was seeing every time I woke up, and it turns out that it was a probe launching. Launch module. Control module. Probe tracking module. So this is the one that is straight busted, yo. Okay. 
Fascinating. Okay, so the question now is do we go back to Giants Deep? Yeah, we're gonna go back to Giants Deep. That's fine. Oh god, that is a okay. Ow, 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 ow. Ow, ow. Stop moving, you bastard. Nailed it. This is it. We finished building the final orbital probe cannon module and are ready to send it in orbit around Giant's Deep for assembly. Controller, stop. To all my friends here at the construction yard, my gratitude for your tireless work. I had given up hope, but I truly believe this cannon may actually succeed where many other attempts have not. Our next step will be to send Privet up to the orbital probe cannon to itself for a breakfast. If I know my brother, Avens, and his spouse will want to launch the probe with as much power as possible, I'm worried the cannon will break under the strain. I propose we give Avens and Mallow a slightly lower maximum power setting than the absolute maximum possible to create room for their enthusiasm. Are you going gelatinous on us, love? I'm delighted by your words, but they're atypical for you. If I'm ever half as gooey as Mallow and Avens behave together does, you may launch me from the orbital probe cannon. Whoa, whoa! Okay. That's fine. This is why I'm wearing a suit. Are we... flying through space right now? What the actual fuck? Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. Oh, Jesus. Oh. I hate this planet. Okay, so that's where I started. All right. How did you crash this thing into another planet? I didn't crash shit! Nothing has been crashed! Maybe. Oh, this is the construction yard. It's like a dry dock. Uh. Somehow, despite all odds to the contrary, I landed on this planet and immediately hit this thing. 
How, I don't know, but I, that's my luck. Like, this thing is fucking moving. If you look at the map on the left, you can see how far we've traveled. Just standing in one place. Long range probe successfully launched from orbital probe cannon. Okay. Kanoi, Daz, and I were lifting orbital probe cannon components for into orbit for assembly, and one somehow sank down beneath the current. Kanoi, you should have seen it. We thought it was impossible for any cannon components to sink even partially below the current, but ours sank straight down to the core. Sava convinced me not to try to recreate the phenomenon myself using other cannon parts, but we're very curious to know what happened. How could something pass through the current? My gratitude for your interesting question. This is exciting. Spire constructed a model of Giant's Deep here in Brittle Hollow's Southern Observatory, and it reveals how an object might sink below the current. Kanoi, I'm unable to grasp the answer by looking through the projection pool. If I visit the observatory, would you kindly explain? If you don't mind the trek beneath the surface of the, to the South Pole, I'd be delighted to see you. There are two trailheads, one up Riddle Hollow's Gravity Cannon, the other at the Tower of Quantum Knowledge. All right. So that would tell us how to get deeper. Good to know. I have bad news, Avens. Yaro says there was a problem with the proposed power source, so the orbital canyon won't be asked to fire. Pulling my locomotive limb. We've seen this, right? Yeah, okay. Oh my god, it's a projection system. Oh! I'm seeing inside the control module right now. It's like teleconferencing. <laughs> can I do that with this? I can. Why do you have those tornadoes there, and why do they look like the ones on my planet? That I'm on right now. I feel like a weird explorer scientist playing this game, and it is fantastic. I'm not necessarily good at my job, but you know, I try. Oh shit. Uh, yeah, we should probably do something about that. There we go. Okay. That's Dark Bramble. Okay, now I definitely want to go to Brittle Hollow. Hold on, the space elevator is taking me up. Alright, we're good. Hazard. Why is the sun red?
That's not how stars work, Tyler. I'm disappointed in you. There's also definitely something orbiting the sun very close in. I'm not sure how it would get to that, though. Are you an astrogeographer? Uh, I have a theoretical doctorate in astrophysics. Whoa, what the hell? What the hell? All right, sun exploded, it's fine. <sighs> so that's the probe firing off. I wonder if that did something to the sun. <laughs> the autopilot flew my ship directly into the sun! Lucky I'm in time loop, because otherwise I'd be super dead. Oh, the ship is a death trap, right? Alright, cool. So... Sun's gonna explode. And not, like, shortly. Or not, like, in a million years, but, like, oh god. Oh god. Oh. But, like, soon. Okay, orbital probe cannon. We don't know where the launch module is. We found the construction yard. Control module and the probe tracking module. The ocean depths. Okay. There are three access ways branching off the central hub area. Uh, it's created to find the precise location of the eye of the universe. No I push the orbital probe cannon above its maximum power setting. No my computer reports the probe tracking module is missing. Yep. Hi, Madeline. Okay. I need to go talk to Gabbro again. I don't want to go back to fucking Giant Steep. Giant Steep can suck my groin. Uh. Let's go to Brittle Hollow. Spot a tree, walk towards it, enjoy. Oh, look, we're in the home and transfer window. We gotta go to Brito Hollow now. Hmm. 
Maybe let's not go to the lantern. It looks like it's mostly magma. A perfect landing. I don't trust anything on these fucking planets. Ow. Unidentified signal nearby. What just happened? There's a tree here now. Quantum fluctuations. Bloom, Felix, and I have determined this atypical shard of rock is the reason objects in this grove are behaving in a quantum manner. The only object, other object we've observed displaying this quantum manner is the wandering moon. I imagine the moon's behavior in this grove are related. In her note from earlier, Felix mentions this strange type of rock isn't found elsewhere on Brittle Hollow. What if it isn't originally from this planet? Hypothesis, this quantum shard is from the wandering quantum moon. Perhaps it is even a small piece of the moon itself. Of note, a unique signal is coming from this shard. Curiously, our friend the Wandering Moon sounds the same. I've also heard the same signal this shard produces calling out from Giant's Deep, Timber Hearth, and the Hourglass Twins. Suppose there are other shards like this one. Oh god. Oh gads. Alright, we're good. Beneath your feet lies the Tower of Quantum Knowledge. If you are preparing to make your first pilgrimage to the Quantum Moon, descend the steps to the entrance below. The knowledge held within will help you on your journey. The trees are moving. The trees in this grove wander about freely, the entire plant roots and all. This is not normal, even for this alien planet, and I never see them move. How is that even possible? Anyone else witnesses this... Disturbing behavior, I implore you, record your observations here. Either these trees are aberrant or my brain must be. Alarmingly, this isn't it isn't only the trees. There is another there is other matter in this area, such as that unusual shard of rock moving in the same eerie way. That rock is unusual for another reason, too, that it possesses a color and texture I've never seen elsewhere on this planet. Hypothesis, this rock shard's presence is significant. We should study it. Could it be what is causing other nearby objects to also move about this area? Bloom is right, the trees do move. I confess I didn't notice until I read his notes. Yeah, and they're attacking my fucking ship. Sun looks fine for now. What the actual fuck is down here? What? What? like to go up, uh, up, please. Oh, this is up. Okay. The 
The Southern Observatory, south 550 meters. Oh. The fuck was that? Nope, that's death. Okay. But I really want to get in there. <laughs> I don't like it. So are pieces just like dropping off of the fucking interior of this hollow planet? Be welcomed in this place. Above you stands the Tower of Quantum Knowledge. If you are making your first pilgrimage to the Quantum Moon, send these stairs and obtain the last of the knowledge you need for your journey. About that. There's a bit of a problem. The crossroads. Why does it go in multiple directions? Why? Don't like that. So did this explode shortly after I got here? Do I need to, like, rush this place? Because there's definitely pieces just falling off of this place. God, this place hurts my brain. Yeah, don't fall out of the time matter stream. Hey, Ryback. Oh, you launch. That's great. Great job, you. Wow, I guess it means I've been out here a while, huh? Well, um, this is Brita Hollow, but you probably knew that. Uh, lots of history here. It's great. What are you doing here? I'm here to see the Hanging City. It's always been my dream to see it with my own four eyes, ever since I was a hatchling. An alien race lived in this solar system long before our species even existed. How could I not want to see what their civilization was like? Only... You've... Probably heard the others say, right? I'm afraid of space. Seriously, I'm more surprised by that than anybody out here. Do you want to know how I even got this far? I fell. Tripped over a gravity crystal. It's dumb luck I end up somewhere my little scout says is halfway stable instead of being sucked into what's below. I've been gauging the stability of the ground around me using my little scout, and this seems to be the place of the best surface integrity, so I'm just going to stay here until I'm ready to move on. That's enough about me and my problems. You didn't come all this way to listen to me blather, did you? <laughs> That'd be... yeah. I learned something. Oh wow, what shouldn't you explore here? Um, not the black hole, actually. That's very no. Which is unfortunate because, uh, the most exciting stuff is all below the crust. Including the Hanging City. That's just to the north. You can kind of see it from here. There's also this big dome on the South Pole called the Southern Observatory. You can't get inside from the surface. Trust me, I tried. But it's like if, uh, if it's like the rest of the Nomai structures here, there's probably a path to it beneath the crust somewhere. Good luck exploring. Um, if you'd learned anything about the Nomai, I'd love to hear it. If it's not too much trouble. I'm an archaeologist, remember? Or, um, THE archaeologist, seeing as all I'm, I'm all Timber Scott right now. 
Brittle Hollow is rich with no Maya history. That's why I'm here. This planet is an absolute treasure trove of culture, history, and science. If you have any questions about Brittle Hollow no Maya, I'm your Hearthian. Or, um, I have some knowledge of them, I mean, so maybe I can help. I learned something! Oh, cool. What is it? Actually, never mind. <laughs> Alright. This is unidentified signal, but doesn't let me tune into it, so... Unless it's a quantum fluctuation, but there's only the one, and it's over here. Tower shard. Those are tower shards under... Wait, that's back where I started. Hold on a second. Oh! Alright. Well, I fell into a black hole, everybody. And it kind of seems like it wasn't as bad an idea as it might have been. Where the fuck am I now? Ah! What the shit? I thought I was dead. I came out of a white hole? What the hell? I mean, this is where I die. Because I can't get back to my ship. Oh god. No, 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 it is. Ah, okay. What is this place? Ember Twin Projection Stone. Okay. Whoop. Welcome to the White Hole Station. If you fell through the black hole by accident, don't worry, you aren't the first. This warp tower can return you to Brittle Hollow. Every warp tower is tuned to a specific astral body. A, warp, a tower's warp can only be used during the brief window when the tower is aligned with its corresponding astral body. In this case, Brittle Hollow. You must be standing on the warp platform on the floor during this alignment to be warped. If you look up while the station is rotating, you can see the alignment over ha happens when the astral body is directly overhead. Huh. Okay. What did I just do? I turned it on. Huh. Why is this game trippy as shit? Where the fuck am I? Departure time 8705890. Arrival time 8705890. You arrived earlier? I arrived earlier? Who arrived earlier?
Also, the sun's about to explode, so, you know, I think I wasted all my time this time. I mean, I have learned some stuff, don't get me wrong, but... Still gonna die. Feldspar spare Jeff Hack fuel. It's annoying to shut person. It's here. The Hanging City. A th 550 meters below. I want to put this into something, goddammit. Oh yeah, that sun's about to explode. I just warped here from the White Hole Station on the other side of Brita Hollow's Black Hole. Design worked. We successfully recreated warp travel. I don't know how close it is to Anona's original design, but as long as we, what we built works, then I'm delighted. Stop that. Wait, this can't be correct. Clary, have you seen these readings? If they were accurate, they would violate causality. There must be an equipment error somewhere. I'm returning to the White Hole Station. If you and Root meet me there, we can run a full diagnostic and hopefully locate the problem. But don't tell Cassava. It's wonderful news. Can't wait to see the warp tower. It's been a long time since I've jumped through a black hole. Oh, 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 oh. Hopefully we have enough time. Remy and I reviewed the records you sent, Pike, uh, Poke, and they appear to show Nomai are arriving at the warp receiver in Brittle Hollow Station slightly before departing from the White Hole Station. I understand it's exceedingly odd, but Clary and I have tested and retested the equipment, and the result is the same time, every, same every time somebody warps. The interval is incredibly minuscule, roughly one hundred thousandth of a second. You suppose our instruments can't accurately me measure time to such a small degree? So I've already told Remy these measurements can't be accurate. How can a Nomai arrive on Brittle Hollow before he even? I ever stepped into the teleporting, the implications are absurd. Poke, as Pi is confident the reading is inaccurate, she's kindly helping me attempt to recreate this phenomenon at the High Energy Lab. We're designing an experiment to take more data. As an update, Poke, the High Energy Lab is at the canyon on Ember Twins Equator. Come here at once, you need to see this. I don't disagree. It would mean that in a, I've inadvertently broken several fundamental theories regarding this universe. We have to reconsider all of our beliefs about the nature of time. Yes, I hope so too. this? Alright, the White Hole Station. Does anyone observe the phantom moon that sometimes greets us in the night sky? Your thoughts interest me. I compliment your eyes. How do you do you imagine it disappears? Hypothesis. Could it be a shift in the light spectrum? Suppose this moon is too shy to show us its face. I'm interested in your playful moon. Is it much like its violent friend, Hollow's Lantern? Imagine if there were two volcanic moons. Then I imagine there'd be none of us left. Hypothesis. There can exist too much lava. I'd strongly prefer we test the null hypothesis. This moon isn't volcanic to my unaided eyes. Sometimes it leaves its friend, Hollow's Lantern, for nights at a time. The nights the moon travels this... Circles this planet appear random. It seems to travel as it likes. Interesting. Alright, so that's Hollow's Lantern. I guess there's just pieces of the planet breaking off now. Here we go again. I 
I didn't travel too close to a black hole. I traveled to a black hole. Oh god. Oh god. Uh, match velocity. I don't know why I'm bothering. The sun's gonna explode soon. Ow. Eh. Whoa! Alright, we're back. Yep, arriving just a little bit before. How do I tell you to go down? It's busted. Maybe I can't tell it to go down. That would be problematic. What the fuck? Yeah, you know, that's not really my greatest concern right now. Oh, is she getting dark? She got too much iron in her, Captain. I don't even know where my ship is at this point. Uh... Actually, where is my ship? Hmm. Guess it's dead. I don't think I can make that jump, but I'm willing to try. Oh, I could totally make that jump. Alright, so I don't like Brindle Hollow. I don't like Giant's Deep. I'd imagine Hollow's Lantern ain't much better than Brittle Hollow. You know, being covered in magma. Huh. Sun just exploded. This game is tripping me the fuck out.
That's got to be some, the inciting incident right there. Something about that probe launching is causing the sun to explode. I have a pre-flight checklist? Oh. Dude, freeze time while talking to others. You need to maximize your loop time. I'll do that eventually. I will get there. Don't you worry. Alright, I gotta go back and talk to Gabbro. Okay. I still have to go to the Hourglass Twins. I've never been there. Figure out what the deal is with you. What are you? Well, fuck it. I'm going to go there first. What destination? What are you, and why are you so far off the orbital plane of the system? Is that the probe? It can't be the probe. Right? It is the probe. Whoop. I broke the map. I broke the map, everybody. It's not the probe. It's the probe that fucking... What? Just fucking kill me. Just fucking kill me. Now it's shooting that way? What the hell? That's not right. That wasn't where it shot before.
All of these terrible astrophysics jokes. Quite frankly, I'm disappointed. But not, like, surprised, so, you know. Nailed it. Something really weird is going on. We're definitely in a time loop. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Cool. I'm taking this pretty well. <laughs> right back at you. Personally, I like new experiences, and I've never been in time loop before. Well, I don't think I've been in time loop before this one, but then it's not like I can know that for sure. So it looks like you and I are the only ones that know we're in a time loop, and even if you tell them about it, no one remembers by the net loop. next loop. What's up with that? Maybe it's because we both made some seriously intense eye contact with the Nomai statue? I'm seeing my memories replay each time before I die, just like I did when the Nomai statue on the beach opened its eyes and looked at me. So maybe no glowing statue, no time loop awareness? I think that's going to be my leading theory, but if you find anything new about the statues at the time loop, let me know, okay? I'll be here. Actually, I found out what happened to the orbital probe cannon. Whoa, that's the cannon breaking apart at the start of each time loop? For real? Did you find out why? Too much power. It's kind of scary how much that sounds like something Slater Feldspire would do. Pretty surprised the Nomai built something that actually broke. Come to think of it, though, broke might be the wrong word, because it looks like the orbital probe cannon is still firing successfully at the beginning of each time loop. That's a good question. It's definitely on this planet somewhere. I mean, unless a cyclone came by and tossed it into space, I guess. <laughs> that would be pretty nuts. Hope it's not lonely. I know, right? Oh, you meant, like, tell you more about it? I get ya. Well, Giant's Deep is massive, and it's mostly water, no surprise there. Strong current of waves beneath the surface that prevents anything from sinking below it. Seriously, I tried everything I could think of to get past that current, and no, neither idea worked. As for land masses, I've counted four islands, including this one. There's also the one with that Nomai statue I saw on the beach. You've seen the cyclones? Yeah, they're hard to miss. They'll toss up everything in their path, islands included. Little tip, if you get picked up, try to land in water. Less likely to kill you. Here's something you might like. At the start of every time loop, I keep seeing a bright flash in the sky. Yep. Seven out of ten on the Gabber relaxation scale. Two islands connected by a natural rock arch. Well, mostly connected, you'll see. Staying right the fuck here. I'm just gonna sit and I'm gonna wait for this fucking island to go back down. Alright, we're good. Gabber can play the flute underwater. That's just awesome. Can't get through there. Good to know.
I mean, I'm gonna have to get through there at some point, I'm aware, but. Alright, we're looking for. Is this the No My Statue Island? Nailed it. That way lies death. <laughs> oh god. Oh god. Oh god, this is my fucking nightmare. Oh Jesus. Oh, my Jesus. I'm gonna die. Ah! Now it's shooting in that direction. All right. I need to take a break. <laughs> this game is seriously trippy and fascinating, but I need to take a fucking break. Oh my God. It feels like everything is 100% intense everywhere you go. Oh, Jesus. And then even if you don't go anywhere, we're gonna explode. Okay. I'm gonna call it there for today. <laughs> I'm gonna call it there because I am gonna be streaming on Wednesday and Friday. So, in the interest of keeping my sanity and not going completely nuts prematurely, uh... I hope everybody enjoyed this. I am fascinated to look more into this game because it is nuts. But I feel like we've gotten some definite clues to, to solve. It's just a matter of successfully getting to them in time before the sun explodes. And that might be tricky. But we've definitely got some pathways that we can examine next time. So I'll be back playing this game on Friday. Uh, all day stream. Wednesday, uh, I'll be starting as soon as I sh uh, decide to, going until about 6 o'clock, and then I got a recording session afterwards, so I can't keep going after that. Uh, and then Friday, XCOM Files, make sure to check that out. As always, check out the stuff we're doing over on the channel, youtube.com slash character select show. We just started playing Infernax, which is an amazing uh, side-scrolling platformer, Metroidvania, uh, and it's got co-op mode, and it's fantastic. Uh, we're still playing Baldur's Gate 3. New episodes are going up tomorrow. Sorry for those not going up earlier. Alan Wake 2. Um, Fallout is quickly reaching the end. Uh, the Void Crew is still a fun romp. And other game. Ready or not. Ready or not. Because, you know, police. But thanks for tuning in. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, thanks for not backseating me and teasing the shit out of me. It's always a good time. <laughs> Have a great night. Have a great week. And I'll see y'all next time.